Hey, what is up ladies and gentlemen, it is I am the one and only Maxi here, and I am back for some more if yet again for the likes of the Maxi Toys videos. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back for some more of Let's Play of Donkey Kong 94 for the Game Boy. So last time we have basically just managed to conclude Rocky Valley, the longest world in the game. And today for this episode is this is going to be the grand finale of this Let's Play. And because of that, today we're about to be begin the final world in a game, which appears to be the Tower. And of course, like the big city, along with ship and the aeroplane, uh, this world contains 8 levels. And however though, unlike those previous worlds, is the fact that we're no longer going to be able to deal with the key kind of uh, segments anytime for the time being, because we've basically done them all. So for the majority of the tower world, it's going to be every single Donkey Kong levels. So, yeah, and of course some of these Donkey Kong levels are pretty hard though. So either way though, the first stage in uh, World 9, it's pretty simple, uh, self-explanatory if you manage to get the pattern down, by basically just have to like activate that switch until you're able to actually just go onto the top, and then basically every once in a while you have to deal with those conveyor belts. So, yeah, this level's not too hard though. Alright, so now let's move on to stage 9-2. And of course, we're no longer going to be able to try to collect those Pauline's items from now on, because, well, we are basically done with those as well. So, uh, anyway, so the, the next stage right here is the fact that Donkey Kong is managed to able to, well, toss out those uh, springboards, and once, once in a while, that Donkey Kong Jr. is going to keep on changing the actual lever switches, so that way it'll create some of these bridges as you can see so either way though but I honestly find that stage quite easy but some of them can be pretty hard though mainly with like let, let's just say for example stage 9-3 the next stage we're gonna be hop into that uh basically that uh, we need to we need now need to avoid this particular skull like enemies I'm not exactly sure what their names are to be honest with you because it has been about quite a long time actually since I actually did manage to able to know any other enemies of the game. Ah, oh, no! Oh well, we'll take a first step in this world anyway. But either way though, we got a lot of extra lives to able to actually bypass for certain things and what have you. So, uh, yeah, that pretty much ups it up from here. So, uh, yeah, a few things we want to explain about for this point today is the fact that today's day is, of course, the, uh, the 21st of May today, in this case in 2021, and it looks like we're almost nearly at the end of May before we move on to the forms of June. And t to top it all off though, is the fact that we've only got about a month left until the new Mario Golf game is going to be released, which is of course, Mario Golf Super Rush, which I'm really looking forward to that, because again, it has been 7 years since the previous Mario Golf game, but that honor goes to all on the 3DS. But I still don't count uh, Mario Sports Superstars, honestly, just because, aside from the fact there's more accurately uh, multiple sports in one particular compilation or something, but I digress. Alright, so here we go with stage 9-4, where we're actually going to be doing something completely different. Rather than just reaching to Donkey Kong, because instead we need to lock up Donkey Kong Jr. And how do you do that? Well, we need to grab these little keys into the actual key holes. And then every time, whenever you grab the key, then you have to take it all the way up in a corresponding uh, key lock pads. And then if you've done that for about five times, then, well, you are pretty much locked up Donkey Kong Jr. So that way we no longer need to worry about him now. So we now need to mainly focusing on the final four stages that we're going to have to reach up against with Donkey Kong, as you can tell. So because of that, though, yeah, that's all, that's all pretty fine and dandy and everything. So either way, though, yeah. And of course, it gets a bit difficult later on, though. I do apologize that the actual voice is going to be meh at points, because somehow I just got a, a little bit of annoying cold. But thankfully, that I don't able to actually get COVID or anything like that. Thank goodness for that. So anyways, so let's move on to stage 9-5. So this is basically 25M from the likes of the first stage in a game, but slightly longer. So because of that, though, this is by far one of the easier stage in terms of, uh, well, in terms of the tower world. So, yeah, everything goes all fine and dandy and everything. So, and plus we can able to get a whole lot of, uh, 
time for that until you're able to get those extra lives back if you keep on dying a lot, so... Oh boy, this particular stage. Uh, this stage can be annoying because of how the fact that, well, first of all, we need to rely on this little, uh, monkey bars that we have to able to pull up with once again. And also, ah, dang it, I just died due to fall stunned move or something like that. It's kind of hard to explain about this sometimes because I know for the fact that matter is though, it's the fact that I wasn't paying attention. So either way though, we'll try that again and hopefully we'll be able to actually pass this part. So even then no. And also this level does have a very, very annoying feature in the end anyway that we'll probably show it off until then. So either way though, we'll just, uh, be very careful not to fall down or anything, and also to top it off, we need to dodge uh, these kinds of enemies right here. And as well as that, spikes that we need to watch out from below. And also not to mention though, those sparks from that little, uh, uh, you know, the actual monkey bars to able to... Uh, oh, jeez, that was close. Thanks to that particular bridge over there. That I believe that Donkey Kong has managed to able to activate that for uh, the Switch lever, so... Oh jeez, that was close. In fact, sometimes I keep on, like, missing that particular horizontal bar, but uh, usually most of the time, though, I always have to put up with, uh, press the directional pad up, so that way we were able to hang on to it. Okay, right here. If you manage to go onto the diagonal wire, and if you manage to able to pass Pauline, then you weren't able to actually get into Donkey Kong if you in the manage to one shot you, so Like that Stupid Donkey Kong. So yeah, that is by far is the most annoying feature in this level because um, if you're trying to able to angle angle yourself for able to actually just try to uh, go for Pauline, but if you accidentally managed to went through Pauline and managed to went on to Donkey Kong instead, uh, basically you would be able to get a lot of trial and error. So yeah, this is kind of annoying though, especially when uh, you know when this happens here, which it will happen a lot by the way, because most of the time you would easily manage to get yourself screwed. So, yeah, easily the most frustrating element on that stage. So, hopefully we'll try this again, and hopefully for the fourth attempt, even though that I somehow managed to waste it for about three extra lives so far, with only with this very, very annoying uh, element on this stage at the end anyway. So, either way though, we'll be able to try to accept that. Oh, jeez, that was close. I almost gonna get myself screwed over by that little spark. So anyways, let's let this enemy go through, and boop, there we go. So, instead of able to actually just to, well, go down there, so I think it's probably best to able to do it from this angle, because otherwise, it will make it, it, it will make the actual jump a little bit easier to go through. So, let's hope, there we go. So it's not too bad though, it's just that they're very annoying mechanic, where basically you're gonna have to judge your angle for able to not to get close to Donkey Kong, because again, it will kill you if you, you know, get to Donkey Kong easily, so. Oh boy, this stage, we have ourselves quicksand blocks a return, and while at it, you have to dodge a lot of poison mushrooms, so. Some people seem to say this is the hardest stage in the game, but ironically enough, I actually did this on the first try, so. Probably it's because of the forms of a really, really cool uh, backflip or anything like that. So yeah, that's actually pretty swell. But we're not gonna end off here because we have ourselves the last stage to deal with, which is of course stage 9-8. And basically, much like before, we need to uh, deal out with Donkey Kong with at least three hits, and then basically he'll be done for good. And then hopefully, oh god, that was close. I'm almost gonna get myself flattened all of a sudden. And while at it though, is the fact that poison mushrooms are still a thing, so because of that though, we need to avoid touching those uh, po poison mushrooms, so that way you would be able to, well, try to avoid getting shrink or somewhat smaller or what have you. So, again, it has been a while since I actually did done some of my commentary recently, just because, well, then again though, I have to focus, that's all I have to really do for this point. And, uh... The only thing that's kind of annoying in this particular stage, aside from, uh, 
you know, poison mushrooms keep on, like, uh, spreading and stuff like that, uh, depending if the barrels have been breaked. And also another thing as well is that unlike the previous uh, Donkey Kong stages, that were the one you have to fight against him, uh, you always have to use the handstand in order to able to actually just, well, flip over those barrels so that way it'll just land them flat and then you were able to pick those barrels up. So uh, yeah, keep that in mind, especially noticeable how the fact that this is by far one of the trickier fights. Especially noticeable you have to do with this uh, very annoying wind to top it off as well. So because of that though, think of like how it did any forms of Rocky Valley, Donkey Kong boss fights, except, well, at least you don't have to worry about those annoying birds, because annoying birds doesn't seem to appear on this particular stage. But the worst defender of them all though is of course the wind, because jeez Louise, the wind will able to throw you off a little bit. But I digress. Oh god, okay. I think that should be alright. At least I've been- I'm hoping to able to survive for this, for the most part, and... Yeah, sometimes- Ah, oh, dang it. Hey, this could take a while for this point. This could take a while. Even though, it's not necessary that this world wasn't nearly as long as the forms of Rocky Valley is. But, uh, again, what makes this world kind of tricky and difficult is that, well, since we actually at the end of the game, so, uh, either way though, expect to be able to be a lot more difficult, more than you think about it. So, hopefully, we would be able to actually do it successfully, so because of that though, of course the wind will be able to throw you off if you managed able to try to do, you know, like a handstand move, to able to actually just to flip over the barrels and all that stuff, so, and able to actually pick them up in the process for this point, so... Oh well, no big deal. Alright, so I just have to... Oh god! Okay, that's fine, because either way though, I don't get uh, killed by the barrels if I somehow manage to fall off for the time being. And also you can't able to use the uh, the handstand ability when you are smaller Mario, in this case- Oh, come on! Oh jeez, what's going on with me? Especially noticeable how the fact that it's bad enough when the wind is trying to able to screw you up a little bit. But uh, either way though, we'll try this again, so hopefully we would be able to pass this for surely. Even though no, I somehow lost about four lives on this particular stage so far. Although to be expected with most difficulties nowadays, it's gonna get a lot more tougher, but uh, hopefully we'll try to like do this this time, so uh... Ah, dang it, it's bad enough, it just breaks that particular barrel while I was gonna hopefully try to pick up, but either way. Um, I suppose another thing I should probably explain about this as well, that uh, recently is the fact that, well, um, I'm pretty sure there's some toy cells, as already mentioned about this before already, but um, unfortunately though, that the E3 2021 live event is going to be cancelled due to, what else, stupid, stupid virus. But thankfully, the actual 2021 E3 is still technically happening, but it's only for like, online digital events. So because of that though, I'm okay with this, because even then though, it has been quite a long time since we actually had a digital event like that, ever since, well, well ever. So anyways, three hits on Donkey Kong, and you'll be, well, um, you'll be reunited with, uh, Pauline, again. So, hopefully for, uh, no interruptions or anything like, anything else like this. If you're probably wondering, why we still get these little scenes? I mean, he's gone, right? And while we're at it, why we still keep on getting a lot of extra lives? That's sure it's gonna be something, alright? Stage 9-9? Uh-oh. Oh, great. The statue's smiling at me. This could be only be one thing. Uh-oh. Oh my god, DK's huge! It's a huge Donkey Kong fight. So yes, ladies and gentlemen, this is the final boss in a game, which is of course Donkey Kong. And of, oh, and of course, as you can tell, that he's actually huge. And in order to able to deal the damage on Donkey Kong, all you have to do is basically just 
toss the barrels at him, and that's all you really have to do. But unlike any other boss fights in the game, that normally has like, uh, three hits to his disposal. How do I miss that? Um, the only thing you can die is from the trash that's falling from the sky like that. Or, uh, you get smashed by his hands. So that's the only thing you will get killed by him, so it's not like you're able to go through face attacks or anything. I'm gonna keep recording until I beat this boss fight. Well, at least if I keep on failing most of the time, then I'll do a jump cut until whenever I do a successful attempt or anything, so... So yeah, this is definitely one of the hardest boss fights in the game because of the amount of stuff that you need to avoid, mainly with all his uh, hands and everything, just don't get crushed by it. And especially noticeable, there's gonna be a lot of, like, uh, trash just falling from the sky, and also occasional barrels will try to flatten you, and that uh, also kills you as well, so, uh... Yeah, this is gonna be a difficult boss fight, so even then, though, at least I'm up for the challenge for it, so, uh... Either way, though, we're we'll able to try to deal with it. So, uh... And also, as you can tell, there wasn't any time limit or anything else like that, because even then, though, since after all, we actually did done all the time-based, uh, stages, of course. So, all we have to do is just, just basically is that we need to kick Donkey Kong's butt. And, of course, like I mentioned this before already, that unlike in any other Donkey Kong fights that normally has, like, three hits, this fight only contains six hits, so that's double the amount of hits. But every once in a while, for those two hits each, uh, they divide into, like, three faces. So, of course, faces were able to actually differ depending on how much hits you got in. So, in this case, the first phase is actually not too shabby for the most part. So, yeah, it's gonna have to hit him twice, and that's pretty much how that goes. And now we move on to the second phase, where it does something a little bit differently. Like, for instance, he will able to now decide to crush you like that. So yeah, that's the only thing you need to watch out for, so... Okay, so... Oh god! How do I manage to survive that without even getting crushed into those little knuckles? But anyway, I'll take it. So, uh, of course if you manage to able to stand completely still while he's trying to activate like a cr What the heck? What the heck is up with that little, uh, collusion thing right there? But I suppose I should probably take it, I suppose, but... Okay then. <laughs> Alright, so let's go ahead and, uh, ah, dang it. Ah! That's bad enough, that usually happens right there. And of course it's bad enough that I have to redo the entire fight again, so, uh, there was no, uh, checkpoints or anything else like that, depending on what segment or the face you're gonna be able to deal with, so... Oh well, we'll try again anyway, though, so hopefully for a much more better attempt than ever before. Well, depending on my skills, wasn't exactly all that terrible and such. Of course, this fight is actually pretty tough, though, so to be expected with most finales of certain video games nowadays. So, anyway, so let's go ahead and... Oh, Christ on the bike. Alright, so let's just knock the barrels over. Of course, some barrels manage to able to... Uh, well, you do need to utilize the handstand, just like the forms of how it does it on stage 9-8. So, either way, though, that's to be expected with, uh, barrels usually works for the sake of this fight, so... Of course, if I do somehow fail on the, uh, on this attempt, then I'll pretty much gonna have to jump cuts to able to do a successful attempt. So... But keep that in mind, this is pretty tough, though, so either way, though, if why fight against him anyway, so, uh, anyway, so let's go ahead and just keep on tossing the barrels at him, so even then they'll, they'll pretty much deal the amount of damage. I think the best strategy I can think of is the fact that, well, uh, every time when if you see the actual fists, manage to able to somehow slam onto the floor, uh, basically jump at the right time until you're able to actually not get stunned, so, for that little, uh, earthquake, uh, stunned ability or something like that, so... Oh, jeez, that was close. Alright, so let's do that. Oh, god, that was close. I almost gonna get crushed again. I've no idea what's going on with the actual weird collusion thing on this fight. Anyway, so I think that's two hits on the second phase. And now we're gonna move on to the third and the final phase. Oh, god, I remember this phase. 
We have to avoid his. Oh no! Ah! Oh, I was so close. Okay, so quick um, edited right there, and if you couldn't tell already why I've got 93 lives right now, um, somehow I just keep on getting screwed over a lot. But uh, thankfully, this will be a successful attempt right now, so because of that though, let's see if we can able to do this proper this time. So yeah, instead of able to actually focusing on the bottom portion of the fight, so I think I highly recommend you is to stay on top the whole time. And because while you're at it, that you get out to focusing on just trying to able to utilize the handstand until you're able to knock the barrels and then just trying to make them flat. And then pick it up and then just toss at the correct angle if you can't be bothered to able to go to the bottom section of the fight. So that way you won't be able to worry about getting crushed or anything else like that. So uh, yeah, it's pretty intimidating, I'm not gonna lie, for the sake of the whole fight. Which, uh, either way though, that pretty much steps it up at this point, so... I gotta say, I really like the actual music on this boss fight though, even though, uh, this boss fight were able to actually bring that concept back until when we get on to Mario vs Donkey Kong, that, uh, we'll talk more about that until specifically this November, so because of that though, yeah, I'm really looking forward to that. So, anyway, so now let's move on to the, uh, the third and final phase, which hopefully we'll try to able to pass this part right now, so, uh, and of course, it's still pretty tricky though, just because the amount of trash is falling from the sky above, and, uh, yeah, that pretty much stops it up from here. Alright, so here we go on to the third and the final phase right now, so, I'm pretty sure it's the exactly the same phase as the new forms of the first phase, so, yeah, there's not much else to say about this for the most part, so... And I think we know it's the last hit already, so, uh, hopefully we'll try to do this. And, farewell, Donkey Kong! And there he goes. So now we're getting able to actually now reunite with Pauline without any interruptions now. So because of that, though, yeah, everything else goes all fine and dandy and everything. And somehow we can able to actually head back into that familiar Mushroom Kingdom place. And Polly just managed to give Mario a Super Mushroom, so that way he now grows into a normal size. And somehow Donkey Kong managed to fell onto Mario. But, Mario can able to pick him up, like a strong man. <laughs> and also Donkey Kong Jr. just managed to pop over for the time being, so uh, yeah, that's pretty much about it in terms of Donkey Kong 94 for the Game Boy. Um, what's my final thoughts of this particular game? Um, usually, relatively speaking, I actually really enjoyed this game. Like, let's talk about the positive things about this game. Uh, the gameplay looks very unique and is actually interesting whenever they managed to able to introduce that specific, uh, uh, you know, puzzle elements on certain levels and such, which continues that tradition until Mario vs. Donkey Kong for the Game Boy fans usually came out. And, um, excuse me. And, um, uh, the amount of world themes is, like, magnificent to able to go through. Although my least favorite world in the, in the game was obviously the aeroplane level because of the music and the annoying wind mechanic. And, uh, also another thing is that the soundtrack is always, like, pretty cool to listen to. And heck, even with the forms of the visuals, do look really, really good, even to this day. And of course, if you ever play the Super Game Boy version of this game on the Super Nintendo, it does, like, um, added some cool sound cues from the likes of Pauline's help voice, as well as the forms of, uh, what, uh, uh, different color palettes or something like that. So, yeah, I think that pretty much stops it up for the sake of time. And, um, uh, another thing's worth knowing for is the fact that the story itself, well, nothing special or groundbreaking, it's pretty cool for its time. Likely due to the fact that if you think this is actually a very similar plot, as in a Donkey Kong arcade game, but it turns out they're gonna bring us more to it than that because of the actual, uh, uh, the amount of worlds you have to go through. So yeah, that's actually pretty insane. And, uh, controls-wise, it takes a bit while to get used to, but honestly, I honestly don't mind about that at all. So, yeah, that's pretty much how it usually goes for the sake of the forms of, uh, what do I think about the overall of the game. So, either way, though, 
And, uh, yeah, I guess that's pretty much about it in terms of Donkey Kong 94 for the Game Boy. I think you should definitely recommend getting this game. You can either just play it on the emulator, or you can able to get the cartridge version of the game. And recently, you can now able to get this on, well, since then, 10 years ago, you can also get this on the 3DS eShop version. So, yeah, that's pretty much about it in terms of Donkey Kong 94. So this is me, Maxi, from the likes of the Maxi Toys. And we'll see you guys next time for Mario vs. Donkey Kong Redo Let's Play in this November. So I'll see you on that month. Bye.